In a year that's seen so many samey games release all at the same time, all attempting to ape popular trends, Death Stranding is a genuine breath of fresh air. However, Hideo Kojima's new title has long been marketed as the beginning of a new genre, and that newness is felt in every single part of the game, to the point where even staying upright is difficult initially. Seriously, you'll be just like stood still and then suddenly start flailing around like you're in a Charlie Chaplin comedy or something. It is ridiculous, and I kind of love it, but what's, what's this about, man? What's this about, Sam? What are you doing? As a result, it can make the first couple of chapters especially seem a bit daunting, but fortunately I've made the mistake so you don't have to, and have rounded up some essential tips and tricks that will lighten the load for both newcomers and seasoned porters alike. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and this is Death Stranding's 17 tips and tricks the game doesn't tell you. Number 17, Sam will walk an empty bike. As said, the sheer act of getting around in Death Stranding is a nightmare, but fortunately you can unlock vehicles rather quickly. The downside to that is they run on batteries, and they don't last all that long without needing a nearby generator to recharge. Consequently, you might find yourself in a position where you're out in the wilderness, 100 kilos of cargo on your back, and your bike suddenly comes to a halt. The obvious next move is to build a generator, but if you didn't pack a PCC kit, you idiot, well, you can walk the bike, hopefully, to a nearby charge point. You're out of luck if this happens if you have, say, a truck, but at least you won't be completely stuck out in the middle of nowhere if your bike does indeed conk out. Number 16, use L1 to see if a fall will kill you. A frustrating part of Death Stranding is the trial and error that comes with testing out which tactics are safe and which ones aren't. That's never more evident than with falls though, as it's not easy to know at a glance whether a drop will be fine to jump down, will it damage the goods you're carrying, or will it send you absolutely flying across the other end of the map. Fortunately, you can always pull out the compass by holding L1 to give you all the information you need. Point it from where you're jumping from to the ground below, and the reader will change colour depending on the severity of the potential impact, meaning you can make an executive decision on whether or not it's worth the risk. Spoilers, it never is. Number 15, you have 1,000 metres before offloaded cargo disappears. Though there is a weight limit in Death Stranding, there are plenty of ways to actually get around it. Whether it's loading cargo onto a vehicle or pulling it along in a little floaty box thing, you can always figure out ways to carry everything in a way that maximises every trip. Sometimes not everything goes to plan though, and you find yourself stuck with too much to carry. If there isn't a post box nearby, or you're close to your destination say, you can just offload it all and then come back for it. If you venture too far away from the dropped loot, it will eventually vanish, but the radius is a quite generous 1000 meters, and the game will even warn you if you're on the verge of losing it. Number 14, crouch for better balance. Especially early on, you're going to be falling all over the place in Death Stranding. A certain bit of kit helps balance things and stops you tripping over your own arse later on in the game, but in the beginning, even the lightest loads can make it difficult to walk without Sam wobbling to either side. One way to offset that quite easily, though, is to just crouch. It'll slow you a touch, but not more than hitting both the triggers, and can save you in a pinch. If you're looking a bit wobbly, hit the crouch button to give yourself a breather, and then avoid disaster. Likewise, pressing L1 to keep the compass out allows you to move in first person without the balance being affected all that much. These are not long-term tactics, but used sparingly, they can be vital in securing perfect cargo. Number 13, mule bases can be wiped out entirely for vital resources and vehicles. Perhaps because the game takes so long to actually introduce it, combat and Death Stranding is something initially treated with caution. The enemy mules that roam the lands are initially terrifying. They chase you relentlessly, know exactly where you are if you're carrying cargo, throw electrified spears at you, and are all around just pretty scary dudes. The thing to know early though is that they're actually total chumps and you should absolutely face them head on rather than try to avoid them. As long as you're smart and don't take on more than two at a time, they're relatively easy to take out, either by countering their attacks and then beating them senseless, or just, you know, just beating them senseless. They're actually really easy. It's worth doing as well, as not only will it give you a few hours of freedom to explore at your own leisure, but mule bases often have plenty of crafting materials, and getting a mule truck from these areas early on can make your life a hell of a lot easier. Number 12, you can bike over most ladders. The most efficient way to get over a small crevice, body of water, or rock canyon in Death Stranding is to lay down a ladder and then walk over it. But that 
can cause a problem if you're on the bike. Fortunately for you though, a good chunk of the horizontal ladders can be driven over if you're careful enough on a vehicle. This works well, especially in water, and can be a lifesaver when it comes to battery. However, it isn't exactly a hard and fast rule, so don't get risky with it. If you have precious cargo that can't be bumped, don't try biking over a tiny ladder covering a big drop. Trust me, it ain't worth it. Number 11, take enemies out with used cargo. Right, when I discovered you could knock enemies out by hitting them in the face with used cargo, I practically became that galaxy brain meme. My life changed forever. Sure, it'll ruin whatever you were carrying or at least heavily damage it, but being able to take out mules, even armored ones, with these impromptu weapons can make combat a total breeze. And to maximize this, you can even use used items that no longer have any value to land an impact without losing anything you actually need. Double points if you hit them with a throw. Seriously, get creative and just see what happens. Number 10, BB bond increases in the private room. Looking after your little BB is a huge part of Death Stranding's gameplay. Sam is literally linked to this tube child and its well-being is essential in players staying on top of the BT threat. However, there is a bond rating between the two characters you might have initially missed. Certain actions net you likes from BB, whether it's jumping while out in the world or chilling in a hot spring, but the best way to raise this bond is in the private room. Messing around here, checking on BB, pulling silly faces in the mirror and more will all net you likes from your tiny little companion and is something you should be doing every single time you rest there. Number nine, trucks can cross red zone water. Getting swept away by deep water is perhaps the most single annoying thing that can happen in Death Stranding. And yes, that includes falling off a cliff when you could have sworn you grabbed the climbing rope. No, that hasn't happened to me. No, I'm not bitter. Why do you ask? If you wade too far in, your cargo will be swept away behind you and players have to frantically try to pick everything up before it washes past them. Fortunately though, it doesn't pose the same problem if you're in a truck. While bikes will be ruined if you go too deep, oi oi, these larger vehicles can drive through deep water. It'll be a strain on the battery for sure, but seeing those red dots pop up on your scanner doesn't mean you're completely out of luck. Number eight, always contribute materials to structures, especially roads. The building mechanics in Death Stranding are pretty much central to its entire identity. While you could get around fine without them, forging new paths and building things that will help both you and other players get around easier is what mechanically supports the idea of rebuilding America that the plot talks so, so much about. Just because you can't build something in its entirety though, be it a bridge or a road, doesn't mean that you shouldn't still contribute materials to it. You might not get the immediate reward of those cushy likes, but it will have a tangible effect on gameplay to spend everything rather than just hoarding it and recycling it in these facilities. Roads in episode three are especially useful, and with a full highway in place, you can net yourself thousands of likes from difficult standard orders much, much easier. Especially those pizza delivery ones, trust me, you want roads for those. Number seven, the icons above mules let you know if they're knocked out. The rule with mules should be that if you're taking the time to actually fight them, you need to make sure you take every single one in the area out. If you don't, their base will remain up and running, you won't get the benefit of porters entering the area, and you'll still be pinged by their radar system. However, it's not initially made clear what actually knocks these characters out for good. Fortunately, you can get all the information you need from the orange icons above their heads. If it's an infinity bind, it means they're only incapacitated. But if it's a couple of stars, then they're properly taken care of. If it's the former, then just walk up to them and give them a bit of a kick, and that'll see the job done. Number six, always equip a blood bag when fighting BTs. Like fighting mules, taking out BTs isn't quite as daunting as it may first appear. The only issue is you need to progress far enough into the story to unlock weapons that can actually damage them. Even when you acquire those though, there is still a major downside. That being the ammo comes from your own blood. Consequently, you should always carry around a blood bag that can counteract this. They're lightweight and should be carried and equipped at all times, because who knows when you'll next need one. Number five, follow your footsteps when going through BT areas and swap shoulders. While we're on the subject of BTs, one surefire way to minimize trouble is to retrace your footsteps when returning through infested areas. If you've successfully snuck through once already, scan the area and look for your trail to follow and stick to a path that you know is actually safe. Likewise, make sure to swap your shoulder perspective when traversing through BT areas, if you have a lot of cargo especially. The default view can make BB's detector difficult to keep track of as the cargo obscures it, but clicking R3 will swap shoulders and give you an unrestricted view. 
Number four, don't dismantle anything except bogus roots. When you're first getting to grips with how building and online connectivity in general works in Sony's new exclusive, you might be tempted to dismantle partially built structures or even items you come across in an attempt to either take them for yourself or salvage some materials. However, Death Stranding's online play is designed in a way that promotes working together, and there's no real benefit from dismantling other people's items. You don't tangibly gain anything from it, and all you're really doing is destroying someone else's hard work. However, ladders that lead to nowhere, their fair game, get them right in the bin. Number three, mainline story missions to get to the wind farm ASAP. Contrary to what some reviews have said, the first few hours of Death Stranding's Episode 2 are not a total slog. Sure, it is difficult and you can totally get lost in the systems and monotony of walking through the same areas over and over, but it's still satisfying and the rewards and story beats come thick and fast. However, while you shouldn't just rush through it, it is worth sticking with the main story orders until you get to the wind farm. At that point, you'll unlock the generator to power the bike nearby, which saves you from making the same trips on foot over and over again. Trust me, don't make the same mistake I did. Scott and Benroy badged me about this, and they were right. Number two, double jump over water. If you double tap X while sprinting in Death Stranding, you can clear more ground with a double jump, and it's surprisingly reliable no matter the terrain you're on. It's less effective when you're more weighed down, but getting a running jump can be so useful early in the game, where even the smallest bodies of water can pose a threat. Fortunately, you can mitigate this issue simply by leaping over them, making you feel like a goddamn superhero in the process. Even when you have cargo, it's still a solid way to clear most of the danger and get yourself to the other side much quicker. Number one, the right way to optimize cargo. Death Stranding's UI is perhaps its weakest element. It's a total disaster, you can't see anything, and nothing makes sense. As a result, it might be just tempting to hit the triangle button and have the game optimize Sam's cargo for you, but that shouldn't be relied on in every single situation. Different parts of Sam's body come with different strengths and weaknesses that can make some missions easier or harder. For instance, you might want to attach important items to Sam's body rather than his backpack, as that way they won't fall off if you hit. Similarly, the tool rack partly dictates what's in your inventory in-game, meaning it's useless to leave an important weapon on your back where it's not quickly accessible. There is a surprising amount to take into consideration, but it's worth getting to grips with it rather than hitting optimize every single time you set out. It's not good for anyone. Don't do it. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are you enjoying Death Stranding? And have these tips and tricks helped you in any way? Or were you already a pro and knew every single one of them? I am very tired. I've been playing this game a lot, but I hope you liked this video. Can you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more list news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you for watching. He's two thumbs up from me and BB, and I'll see you soon.